Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to a special edition preview show here from Flow Grappling Studio. No episode of A Fistful of Collars this week. Instead, me and Chase here to break down one of the hottest jujitsu and grappling events of the year, Kasai Pro 4, coming up this weekend, November 10th from New York. We're gonna be live streaming it on flowgrappling.com. Very excited once again to be working with a Kasai Pro, amazing tournament. Chase, how do you think about uh, this particular event? Man, I can't wait. It's always a, a great weekend when Kasai comes around and it hasn't been that long since the last event, so I'm still hyped from that. And uh, of course, I think the biggest thing on everyone's mind is Gordon Ryan. I cannot wait to watch him in action. He's been stirring things up as always on social media lately. As always, indeed. So Kasai Pro 4 goes down this weekend. So the purpose of this show is to kind of talk a little bit about some of the matches, some of the key matches that we'll be looking forward to. And we're gonna be revealing exclusively to you the groups for the eight-man featherweight tournament. So let's move ahead. So first of all, we've got Kasai Pro 4. Basically, you have the undercard. Uh, you have the eight-man featherweight uh, championship and you also have the three super fights, okay? So, the main card and the super fights, they're the ones that we're gonna be focusing on, and the main card, the first super fight that we'll be looking at is 10th Planet Black Belt, Jeremiah Vance, a submission hunter himself, up against Mateus Lutz. Now, Chase, mm. this is actually a bit of a, uh, a last minute addition because Mateus originally had a different opponent. That's right, and I couldn't be happier though with Jeremiah Vance stepping in on short notice. Uh, the man is just a savage. He has some of the most brutal, creative submissions we've ever seen. Uh, I did a highlight video that got a million views in like four days. He's just so fun to watch. He's been on Fight to Win, and now he's making the jump to Kasai. Cannot wait. And Mateus Lutz, stylistically, is, is a great partner or challenge, I should say, for Jeremiah Vance. They've got very contrasting styles. Mateus Lutz plays kind of a traditional game, you might say, coming from Marcelo Garcia Academy. Very much positional player, likes to smash, likes to go for the back and uh, I, I can't wait to see them go head to head. What do you think about this? Yeah, well, originally, Mateus' opponent was scheduled to be PJ Barch, also 10th Planet Black Belt. So Jeremiah is stepping up to replace his teammate in this match. Now, PJ is, uh, is very different, you know, grappling-wise to Jeremiah. PJ's a former D1 wrestler mm -hmm. and a black belt. So he's got an interesting combination of styles there. He's able to play from both top and bottom. Now, Jeremiah is one of those guys much like Richie Martinez, actually, also from the 10th Planet System Stroke School, in that he's a very creative submission artist, and he pulls stuff out from angles that you just wouldn't even think it's is crazy. possible. Right? Yeah. We've seen him choke people out from bottom side control in no-gi matches. He goes there deliberately. He, he goes yeah, there yeah. deliberately. Now, I wouldn't advise doing that against Mateus Lutz, but you know who else knows what Jeremiah is able to do? We know that he's got a sick rubber guard. Uh, we know that he's well-versed in pretty much every area, like upper body and lower body submissions. And of course, Mateus, we saw him fight through to third place in the 175, uh, 170 pound tournament, I should say, from Kasai Pro 3 uh, as a brown belt. Going in against some really, really tough black belts and really just proving that he's got what it takes to compete at the elite level. So Clash of Styles, very interesting for me, uh, very different, difficult one to predict. And you have to ask as well, like, is, is coming into a match like this late notice going to hurt Jeremiah at all? No, I, I think he's a seasoned pro. He competes almost every weekend. He's been on some huge shows before, so I think he's, he's probably really excited, to be honest. I think the pressure and the real bravery might be on Mateus Lutz's part because he's taking on a giant sort of... Uh, a wild card, let's yeah, say. Yeah, a wild yeah. card, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Jeremiah Vance, you cannot predict what he's going to do, where P.J. Barsh kind of matches up almost equally to Mateus Lutz. They both like to wrestle. They both kind of want to be on top, I think, so... Uh, Mateus Luce is really stepping up to a, to a unique challenge here, and he did impress me quite a bit the last Kasai, especially in the, the wagner Hosha match, a match he didn't win, but he did not look intimidated by wagner Hosha. Oh, he went head-to-head. -head. Yeah, who was yeah. one of the scariest guys, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, ever to compete against. We'll talk more about him very shortly in his super fight, but... So I think Mateus Lutz is a super exciting athlete and both these guys, uh, it's gonna be a fun match. Yeah, it will be fun, definitely. And uh, speaking of Wagner Hocha, as you mentioned, moving on, uh, the, uh, the next super fight that we wanna talk about is of course the uh, rematch. So this was the final of the 175, 170 pound Kasai Pro 3 tournament where we saw Wagner Hocha and Hanato Kanuto go head to head 
fighting their way through through a stack card of just eight really, really, really tough guys coming out into the finals and, and Canuto narrowly taking that win. Uh, I, I think this is the perfect opportunity to basically settle the score here, right? Because Hinato, you know, he went out there and he had to go head to head with somebody like Wagner. Wagner actually lost the match on a penalty point, I mm -hmm. believe, that he wasn't even aware of. And he instantly said immediately after, he's like, hey, let's make the rematch here. Come on, let's do this again. Right. So, what do, you, what do you think about that? I mean, I'm, I'm happy it's going down. Uh, yeah. Originally, Hanato was supposed, supposed to face Edwin Najmi, a match that I really hope takes place sometime in the future. Edwin's so fun to watch and another great style clash there. But I am not sad that we get to see this run back. Both these guys are, are very exciting on the feet. They have unique submissions as well. Hanato's flying attacks are, are among the very best ever. And Wagner is just sort of a brutal... <laughs> nasty man, as we call him around these parts. He is a nasty man. He's a great guy, but yeah, his jujitsu is nasty. Let's put it that way. So yeah. the match was very close. I think both guys were exhausted by the time they had gone through their four-man brackets to meet in the final of Kasai. We're going to see them fresh, ready to go, and there's a little bit of heat there from mm. the last match. So I, I think that itself is going to make this more fun. Both guys are ready to go from the start. Well, they got a lot more time to work in this match mm. as well because, of course, the, uh, the the Kasai Pro Tournament format, they're only six-minute matches, right. right? Now, as you said, they, they had to uh, fight their way through, so there were already a number of matches deep in that event. And the, the last match with everything on the line in six minutes, you can't really afford to make too many mistakes. But the, I believe the rules for this match are... Uh, Kasai Pro Superfy rules of 10 minutes plus a five minute uh, overtime. So I think that's 10 minutes of submission only, is that yeah, correct? Yeah, exactly. Yes. So that's going to give them a lot more room to be a little bit more creative in their attacks um, and really go after it. So I think that's, uh, I think that th we'll definitely see something very different in this encounter. I, I think so too. And I, I think the, the rules change doesn't really favor one or the other more. They're, they're both submission hungry guys. I think the game will open up though. I mm -hmm. think the last match, no one wanted to be on the ground very much, or at least on the bottom. And now, now I think we'll see you guys, or these two athletes, put themselves in somewhat compromising positions, hoping to expose a submission somewhere. Absolutely. So. Well, uh, speaking of submissions, we have a submission machine in our next super fight, of course, the Kasai Pro main card featuring the tournament, but also three amazing super fights. The third super fight that we want to feature is the return of Gordon Ryan going up against Kasai Pro 2 tournament champion, Mateus Denise. Wow. Awesome match. You know, <laughs> wow. Kasai really outdid themselves, I think, with this one. So uh, what can you say? Uh, we keep using the phrase clash of styles, but I think you cannot find a better sort of mix here than Gordon Ryan, the submission expert. That, uh, he finished a match anywhere at any time versus Mateus Denise, who is just a bruiser you know yeah. his passing is, is <laughs> he really relentless is. Yeah. he's a gorilla out there and um I, I don't know what what can we say about this well i mean mateus is one of those guys i'm amazed because he is so active and he competes everything gi or no gi he's always out there always putting it on the line but can you believe that him and gordon have never faced off so it is interesting that Mateus has faced uh, Gordon's uh, mentor, training partner, teammate, Gary Tonon, okay? And he holds a submission win over Gary That's right, as a wrist well. lock, nasty a wrist lock in 2015. Lock, yeah. So uh, Mateus is very, very capable of going out there and, and taking out some big names, as we've seen, where he won the Kasai Pro 280-pound tournament without conceding a single point. That's just amazing. just consider that for a moment without giving up a single point. That's, uh, you know, th there's no hyperbole here, but that's also, that's almost a Marcelo Garcia-esque feat, right? Of right, and like. <laughs> you have to remember under Kasai rules, that means no one even got a somewhat close submission attempt on him because that does count for a single point. Yeah, so no advantages in Kasai He Pro, was playing yeah. very smart, which is, he's going to need that against Gordon Ryan this weekend. Now, uh, this, this... Match, though, opens up some uh, interesting questions because, again, it's, uh, it's under the 10-minute submission-only rules and then five minutes uh, uh, with points after if there's no clear winner at the end of that. And, of course, we know that, obviously, Gordon doesn't really care too much about points, right? No. Because what does he want? He wants to finish. Now, he wants to go out there. He wants to get a limb or he wants to get the neck and he wants to get that decisive, decisive end to the match. Now, of course, the question is that how does he get to that? Because Mateus is super strong top and bottom, 
He's a very physical athlete. Mm. He's going to be a little bit smaller than Gordon, but apparently, and this is amazing considering so the, the level of people who have told me this, and I'm talking about guys like Bernardo Faria and stuff, mm. but they've said that Mateus is one of the strongest people that they've ever trained with. I mean, you get a look at the guy. I'm not shocked <laughs> to hear that. I, I imagine he's a beast, and um, it, sh it shows in the way that he, he competes. I, he's so headstrong. You know, he's just nose to the grindstone the entire match, which could be a problem with Gordon. Gordon's very good at setting up tricks and traps. Um, I'm curious to see how Mateus navigates sort of the never-ending danger that's Gordon's game. I do think Gordon has shown that he doesn't necessarily have He's not a one-trick pony. He, yeah. he, he can play anything he wants. And, yeah. so, and he actually makes a point of proving that nowadays, exactly. right? It's like people were calling him just a leg lock guy, so he's like, I'm not going to tap anybody with leg locks. I feel like he hasn't <laughs> done a leg lock since 2016. You know, yeah. it's, it's funny how, how that worked out. But uh, it's, it's really tough to say. I'm, it excited. To I'm excited to watch this one play out. I think, again, it being a super fight, both guys being fresh, really it might play to Mateus' advantage in this because Mateus can just go all out for all 10 minutes. He doesn't have to worry about another match. And that could be the key factor, I think. Yeah, I think that Gordon's really going to have to force Mateus to make mistakes, mm. all right? If he wants to open something up, because Mateus is so strong in his defense and so uh, so headstrong in his attacks that really, like you said, that he, Mateus is going to be careful of falling into any tri tricks or traps. And Gordon is going to have to basically hope that Mateus gives him something to work with, because otherwise it could, it could end up kind of like, you know, Two sort of immovable objects, right? But right, and we, we can't. This is for the Battle of New York, by the way. Both these guys are rival crosstown gyms, less than 200 yards from each other, basically. Yeah. And, Four um, blocks away. Yeah. There's got to be more on the line than maybe just the title. There's always been a little bit of chatter between the two gyms, so it'll it'll be a little bit of heat there. I'm excited. Yeah, absolutely. So, moving on, the eight-man featherweight uh, world championship, Kasai Pro champion. Man, this is. Uh, this is one, one of the most stacked events that I think that Kasai Pro have put on, and that's saying something because only four events deep or three events deep coming into their fourth, and uh, the amount of talent that they've had on so far is incredible. But we mentioned it before, the list of names just read like an ADCC bracket, mm. you know, the, 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 the talent. Now, there have been some changes. There have been some very, very last minute withdrawals due to uh, injury. And uh, we've got to basically, we'll be exclusively announcing the replacements now as we're going through this. But it is to let you know that John Callistine is out of the eight man 145 pound championship and he's going to be replaced. And we'll bring that guy's name up in just a moment. But uh, also, Kim Terra, we announced that he stepped up very recently to replace Ashley Williams, who has also had to withdraw via injury. So, moving on. Just to look at it as well, the, the way that the uh, Kasai Pro Featherweight uh, tournament works is that you have two groups of four, and basically they will fight amongst themselves in a round robin, so everybody fights everybody else, okay? And then the winners of each of those groups, uh, they, they accumulate points based on the method of victory. So just to remind you, it's three points if you win by submission, it's two points to win via points. And if it's a draw, then it's one point each. Of course, no points for a loss. So it isn't just winning that counts. It's how you win. And that changes things, right, Chase? Absolutely. Uh, we saw at the last Kasai that Victor Silverio almost advanced because he had a submission win, I think. So um, it really does play out into the strategy later in the rounds where you might have won three matches by, or two matches, I should say, by, by points, but you might need to get a submission win to advance to the next round. It really has to open up your game. It forces people to play differently, and that's why I think Kasai is so fun. You know, it's round robin. Your favorite guy gets to go at least three goes, and they might have to play differently than they normally would. And uh, losing isn't necessarily the be-all and end-all as well, exactly. because if you lose your first match, you can come back and you can win three in a row and make it through. So it's... Uh, it keeps yeah. it fun. Keeps it, it does very keep interesting. it fun. So looking at how the groups actually work, so uh, if we bring this up so you can get a good look at this, but you have two groups, Group A and Group B. So of course, after all the matches have taken place and after the results have been tallied up, the winner of Group A will face the winner of Group B in the final, and the second place finishers and those two groups will face off for third place. I like that as well. They have to fight for third place. It makes it worth something, Absolutely. Right? Definitely a, a preferred format. Really does. So moving on, this is the, uh, the, the 
outline of how the groups will look and we're gonna fill these in as we go. Basically, we will announce one at a time, one from group A, one from group B, until all of these squares are full. And Chase, I think, drum roll, da, 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 it's time to announce the first guy. This is the first time I've seen them too, by the way, so I can't wait to see how this plays out. <laughs> but from the edge of the my surprise seat all element morning. is real. <laughs> okay, would you like to announce the first one? Let's go for it. Go clicker, ahead. Clicker, please. Clicker, ready, at the ready. We will see Gio Martinez from 10th Planet. Gio, of course, was supposed to be on Kasai versus AJ Aga's arm in a super fight that didn't play out. Injury happened, but he's back at Kasai. Uh, I love Gio's style. Very versatile athlete. Loves to get into the scramble, can play in top, bottom submissions again from anywhere. I believe he's the number one ranked black belt in the 10th Planet uh, internal That's right. rankings as one, well. One so. of Eddie's pro uh, prodigies. And just to clarify, because this comes up all the time uh, when, when this photo is posted of Gio. What it means? He wants to blow your mind with his jiu-jitsu. Yeah, so. and he does, man, because he's got some it's great jiu-jitsu. You know, we've talked about his, uh, his, his kind of creative jiu-jitsu. He's got some amazing back takes, rolling back takes, attacks from the truck. He's uh, very, very interesting to watch. And that obviously physical background uh, of him as a, a break dancer. Mm -hmm. for, you know, well, we say formally, I'm sure he still dances, right? But yeah. you know, that was his background before he came into jiu-jitsu so a very unique grappler is Gio Martinez he's, he's built for the show I can't wait to watch him compete through a few rounds and uh, yeah he's gonna have a hard time though because he's in a mix of killers out there yes so that is our first edition for the groups next up is in group B we have got Gianni Grippo the young black belt from Marcelo Garcia Academy in New York so Gianni, of course, is a Kasai Pro 1 veteran. He fought in the 155 pound tournament and he took third place in that event. And uh, wow, I mean, what does it say about Gianni? He is a, a consummate professional. He's one of the hardest working and most consistent grapplers out there on the tournament scene. He competes gi, he competes no gi, points submission only, doesn't really matter, just as so long as he's able to get on the mat and do what he loves most, which is competing, right? Absolutely, and, and Gianni's answered a lot of questions in the last 12 months about heel hooks. So we hadn't really seen before Kasai Gianni compete in a format that allowed reaping and leg locks uh, such as heel hooks, and he's performed flawlessly. He hasn't been submitted by any heel hook attacks, and, he, and in the last Kasai he faced John Calistine in a match where many were curious to see John Calistine being one of the fastest rising uh, guys from New York with, with a leg lock specific game. Gianni didn't win that match, or no, he did win that match. He did. Th that's right, that's right. He won that match after basically trying to pass John Calistine's impassable guard. No, uh, Calistine to the decision, right? Yeah, to decision win, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, it, it was a very tough match all around, but. Yeah. Though Gianni, uh, I think that with the match as well, of course, points are at play in the uh, in the, the Kasai Pro tournament. Now he's got a lot of experience as to uh, the strategy necessary mm -hmm. to compete in those high level tournaments, and uh, went to score the points and went back off. And so uh, very interesting addition in Group B, the first name. Uh, moving on into Group A, going back. Uh, would you like to call this one again, Chase? You want I to will take group over a? Group A, yes. Okay, Group A is all yours. We're going to see Next Bruno up. Frazzato of Atos. Bruno. One, of the, one of the most, uh, one of the, let's say, one of the, the, the veteran grapplers uh, amongst the eight-man here. That's right. Is, is Bruno's about 35, I want to say. He's a former ADCC Brazilian Trials winner, so he's very an ADCC veteran, of course. Make, uh, he had a match with Gio Martinez at the a super fight at the last West Coast Trials where he beat Gio, I think, by five points, five to nothing. So he's very much in the mix, very, very talented athlete. Uh, I'm excited to see him. He's a bit of a wild card in this event. Um, again, round robin makes it fun. He's going to see all the other athletes. You know, I think the thing about Bruno as well is that uh, with age comes experience, mm. right? I mean, you know, we, we, we know that he's an amazing technician. You know, he's got so much experience. So he, he won the ADCC trials in Brazil, which are one of the toughest ones to win. And he's an ADCC veteran. Uh, we've seen him compete gi no gi. And um, I, I'm really excited to see how his, um, his very, very able and very technical jiu-jitsu game, which is by no means old school, uh, but how his, let's say, his experience does stack up against some of the younger members uh, or younger uh, opponents, shall we say. So uh, he's the second addition to Group A. And jumping back to Group B, we've got Ethan Krellenston. Now, Ethan, man, he made his name at the 2017 ADCC Trials, mm. West Coast Trials, 
punched his ticket, went to the World Championships later that year. I believe he was still a brown belt at the time. That's correct. And uh, of course, Ethan now one of the members of the, the Danaha Death Squad, uh, Canadian, out of Montreal, but spends a lot of time training in New York in the blue basement with Danaha. And uh, just last week competed and won the ADCC trials again. This time winning the East Coast trials and once again will qualify and he's gonna go to ADCC next year to the World Championships. Now Ethan's a submission machine, right? Absolutely. He, we've seen him go out there and we've seen him really take it to guys. And, um, you know, but has a lot of experience of also competing in the points rules tournaments. We've seen him in IBJJF tournaments. We've seen him in ADCC. So it's not something that's foreign to him. The, uh, I think the question for Ethan here is how he's going to handle those six minute matches because a lot of his experience has been in tournaments that offer a longer time to work. So six minutes, That's of course, the pace is so high, he's going to have to go out there and he's going to have to really you know, go hard after those submissions should he want to advance. But what do you think about Ethan? Oh, I love Ethan's game. He's got a wicked triangle attack from, from anywhere when he's playing guard and he also has a really nasty Kimura setup that <laughs> it sort of uh, resembles a little bit of Wagner Hosh's game where he's really hunting for that, isolates the arm, will either take it to the back or, or go for the submission, or again, maybe even lock up a triangle from there. So Ethan is, is really fun to watch. He's definitely proven himself as one of the elite Nogi grapplers in the world right now, and he's super young. Ethan's, I think, what, 19 years old or something like that? Oh, I don't know about that young. <laughs> no, I don't think he's older than 21. God so, damn. Um, <laughs> Make I, me feel old over here. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, me too. A master's one over here. But <laughs> Ethan, Ethan is super fun to watch. I think he's going to do just fine in the six-minute rule set, and... Uh, is really going to take it to the rest of the guys in Group B. Hell yeah. So moving on. So looking at it, group, groups are really starting to take shape now, right? We're halfway there. So Group A, we've got Martinez and Frazado. Group B has got Gianni Grippo and Cranston. Moving on, back to Group A. Number thir third person is... So this would have been John Calasim, but we're getting the replacement of Frank Rosenthal. A Hazel awesome. Gracie team member steps up to replace one of his uh, fallen teammates. Uh, John Calistine out. We're not exactly sure why. It could be injury. It could be staff. We don't know is the answer. But mm. uh, John's out. So I think it's only fitting that a Hazel Gracie guy gets that uh, invitation. Right? It's definitely a huge step up for Frank. He was scheduled to be on the undercard versus uh, Carlos Rosado. That was going to be kind of the main event of the undercard at Kasai. Frank has been on at least one Kasai undercard. I'm sorry, Frank, I can't remember. You also uh, had a great match at Rise Invitational. He's sort of taking over the East Coast uh, scene, basically. Oh, he's definitely a scene. stalwart of that local scene. Exactly. So this is, this is sort of his debut on the international stage here at Kasai Pro 4. And man, if he, if he gets a win, just a single win over Gio Martinez, over Frazado, that could really launch his name into a stratosphere. And if he makes it to the final, that's a whole nother world for Frank. So. Absolutely. And I think uh, Frank's in the position of the underdog as well, right? So he's really got nothing to lose. He can go out there and he can just put it all on the line. And uh, against guys as, as well known as Gio and, and, and Bruno, as you said, sometimes even a strong performance, e even in defeat, is enough to elevate his name. Absolutely. Put him on that level. He's so. in a great position. Uh, in many ways, I'm sure the other athletes are a bit envious because he can go out there and just have fun for, for three matches and just do his thing. So yeah. it's going to be a good time. I, I'm looking forward to see Frank go out there. So, man, only three names left to go. Let's go back to Group B. And in Group B, we have, boom, Kim Terra. So Kim is another uh, relatively late call-up. Uh, what happened was Ashley Williams, who originally had qualified by winning an undercard match in the previous Kasai, um, he actually hurt his hand, so the young British black belt wasn't able to, to make it out and compete here in Kasai Pro. Uh, a huge shame because I'm sure that's an opportunity he would have loved to have had. But what did they do? They, they asked around uh, looking for a suitable replacement and Kim Terra is the, uh, the, the, the choice here. So Kim, very unorthodox, very unusual fighter, got a very uh, intriguing style and in that he likes to play those chaotic positions. Um, you know, he's obviously, he's the brother of Kayo Terra and Kayo is known mm. as one of the most technical guys in the game. And, and Kim's no slouch when it comes to the technique, but his game is very different to Kayo. Kayo is very, uh, very creative in his attacks, but very straight down the line. Whereas Kim, you never know what he's doing. He's a little do. bit of a fireball. Emo emotion is a factor in Kim Terra matches. Well, he's a scrapper. He's Let's a scrapper. He yes. is a scrapper. Kim will make it a war. He'll get in your face if he feels that he needs to. He needs that to make it. Uh, uh, you know, to get that win. But at the same time, he's also one of those guys that he walks on the mat and he's like. 
no no big deal like i'm just gonna mm. go out there and do my thing sometimes he look like he's just kind of woken up and he goes out there and he just goes after it man so kim's a kim's a firecracker and it's a very interesting addition to this group absolutely i think uh he's been on a bit of a hiatus as well so maybe man this could be a great return to competition for him he's feeling fresh no injuries ready to go and um I think he is definitely going to be an interesting challenge for, for someone like Johnny Grippo and, and Ethan Krellstein. Yeah, absolutely, especially in no gi as well, right? Mm -hmm. Because uh, that, is, that is always a factor here. Some of these guys, as you can see in the photo, Kim's wearing his gi, he's more known, but let's not forget that he's a medalist at no gi world. This guy absolutely. has the experience of competing at the highest level. So very, very good late replacement right there. And man, there's only one name left in each group now. So we could kind of through the process of uh, deduction, I'm sure you could probably guess who they may be, but let's, let's call it Group A. Rounding out Group A is none other than Paulo Miao from Unity. Paulo oh, yeah. has been busy as always, uh, just got back from Korea at Spider, and now he's thrown on, or excuse me, taken off the gi and going into a no gi event at Kasai Pro. We just put up a video of, uh, of two Paulo, videos. Two videos of Paulo rolling nogi. Uh, his passing is some of the some of the best in nogi, which is crazy to think I'd be saying that in 2018 that <laughs> Paulo is a great passer. But he really, he truly is. He's got amazing pressure and uh, a endless gas tank. If, if anyone's built for a round robin style event, it's the Meow Brothers. They can go for days and days and days. Unstoppable. They'd rather yeah. be nowhere else. In, I think on the mats. So. And you know what I was told was that. Um, the, at the last Kasai event, um, Paolo was actually sat mat side and he was watching his teammates and mm. you know he was there to coach. And uh, the word is that he saw the show, he saw the production, he saw the opportunity that it gave people to, to really compete on, a, on an amazing uh, stage right there in the middle of Manhattan. And he immediately went over to the tournament organizers and he said, please get me on the next one. Amazing. How cool is that? That's amazing. And yeah. uh, Kasai is really listening right. Their shows are among the very best in the world, production-wise. It is so fun. And they have the new ballroom. It, it's Man, I'm jealous I'm not going to this one. You get to go. <laughs> I, do, I do get to go. I'm so. psyched, yeah. And then Group A. Wow, look at that. Group A, Martinez, Frazato, Rosenthal, and Meow. Truly no favorites there, although there is a dark horse. Frank Rosenthal being the dark horse, but I... I very balanced. Could not confidently yeah. pick a winner of any kind here. It's oh, so going many to be factors fun. at play. And of course, the final man for Group B will be Augusto Tanquino Mendez. Wow, Tanquino, an absolute rock. Like the nickname says, he is the little tank. Now, this mm. guy is so strong. He's just got he's a great base, very difficult to sweep, but equally good on bottom. A veteran, he's a no gi world champion. This guy, he's, well, I mean, his credentials are just, they, they speak for themselves. ADCC medalist. He's, uh, he's, he's just a, such a reliable, durable mm. kind of grappler. And uh, we already talked about how Frazato is one of the most experienced members of, of his group in Group A. You'd have to say that, um, that Tanquinho is probably the equivalent in Group B, right? I think that's fair. And whenever we talk about Tanquinho, I always think back to, I, I want to say, 2016 Nogi Worlds when he was in the absolute division, taking on none other than Yuri Samoys. <laughs> Yuri's gigantic compared to Tanquinho, yeah. and it was a close match. Yeah. And Tanquinho was also playing on top. Yeah. You know, it was like the craziest thing I've ever seen uh, to watch this small guy bring it, bring pressure passing to someone like Yuri Samoy. So Tanquinho truly is a beast, and uh, yes, very experienced. He just came off of uh, what he would call a disappointing loss to Wagner Hosha at Fight to Win. So I'm sure he's going to be fired up, ready to bring it back and uh, hopefully get another W this weekend. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that, sorry, that decision lost to Wagner, I'm sure that uh, you, you know, whenever you're coming off a, a, a match like that, it gives you the motivation to go out there and mm. go out there extra hard in your next opportunity and to kind of to put that to bed, right? Absolutely. So I think um, looking at these groups, and I'll just bring them up here, looking at these groups right here, wow, that very, very balanced groups, as we've said. So in Group A, You've got your, uh, your two exciting, unpredictable technicians in Martinez and Miao. You've got your, your durable veteran in, uh, in Frazato. You've got your wild card in Rosenthal. And then Group B is very, very similar, actually, because you'd have to say that... Um, that Terror's Tequino a bit of a wild card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, you know, the Terror is definitely a wild card. Uh, Gianni, very, very dependable, very, uh, you know, very consistent, as is Krellinston, even though he's a little bit newer on the scene. And, um, I want to call Gianni a veteran. 
he competes he so much. It, at so he's much. been around he's, so long. He's like he, 25. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> it's just amazing uh, how often that man competes. It's incredible. Well, I love it. Get a good look at that groups right there. We'll be posting these to Flow Grappling very soon. Um, but I think a, an amazing opportunity to watch some great, great jujitsu and great nogi grappling this weekend at Kasai Pro 4. Of course, a stacked undercard, those three main card super fights, uh, Vance versus Lutz, Gordon Ryan versus Mateus Denise, and Wagner Hocha versus Hanato Canuto, and then you've got this eight-man 145 pound tournament as well. Plus the undercard. Plus the undercard, so stacked it, undercard. It's a big night of grappling, it's a five, six hour show, non-stop action, they run a great, uh, great runner show, so it's gonna be fun. You can find the full live stream on flowgrappling.com, Saturday, November 10th, but we will also be uploading the entire replay, event replay, and every single match individually uploaded to the site. Put your pro membership to work. If you're not a subscriber, you need to get one. <laughs> you need to get a subscription. What are you doing? Come on. Yeah, is the way, yeah. <laughs> what, what else are you gonna do? Just to look for results on Twitter? No, come on, you wanna watch some good jujitsu? This is the place to find it. So, Kasai Pro Grappling live on Flow Grappling, November 10th. You know where to find it. Don't miss it.